Hello, everyone. We are Rebecca Dukstrad and Fabian Kenberg, and we are pleased to share with you our research. Our project titled Integrative Design Methods for Spatial Winding was developed as our ITEC master thesis with Maria Blonina and Hans Jakob Wagner as our tutors and Professor Ahim Menges and Jan Knippers as supervisors. In recent years, many projects have demonstrated how fiber composites can open up new possibilities in the field of architectural design. Due to the fibrous anisotropic properties, it is possible to program the material's behavior and generate structurally optimized lightweight structures. Its inherent ability to form complex geometries allows an exploration of new morphologies, materialities, and aesthetics, but it requires also an integrated design method, which considers material fabrication, design, and structural performance in a single coherent design framework. The research conducted in this field relied on additive deposition of filament layers for fabrication of complex geometries with small formwork requirements. The majority of precedent projects deployed reconfigurable frames contrary to solid modes used in conventional industrial applications. These frames featured a big amount of pre-installed anchors for winding of the filament around them. A strategic control of fiber tension and filament winding syntaxes allowed to create complex double curved surfaces that emerged from the interaction of multiple layers of filament pressing against each other. Although this affords the generation of continuous surfaces, a relatively large amount of fiber and winding anchors is necessary, and the frame can become overwhelmingly complex. Placed within the context of this ongoing investigation into the reduction of necessary modes and formwork complexity, this research aims to contribute to the collection of existing strategies by introducing a new type of fiber to fiber interaction called spacious winding. Instead of generating surface-based geometry, the proposed system is designed to create space frame structures in which fibers act as formwork for other fibers, enabling the need of fewer anchors and the use of simpler frames. The conventional notion of the term space frame has been closely tied to large span industrial buildings. For definition, a space frame is a structural system assembled of linear edges and nodes, which are arranged so that the loads are transferred in a three-dimensional manner. These highly efficient and lightweight structures can be described as a minimal spice-defining rigid matrix. However, the complexity of the nodes in the systems can also be an issue. Conventional steel space frames rely on standardized parts as node designs can be highly complex. They usually implicate a fixed amount of connections resulting in fixed topologies. This implies further constraints on the possible connection angles for each edge. Nodes in particular can also be very expensive. They can typically represent from 30 to 50% of the total fabrication cost. Mass customization can be seen as a solution for bespoke connectors, but they still remain quite expensive and still present a fixed amount of connections and directions for each node design. Back in the 50s, Konrad Svaxman's study of a dynamic structure had already envisioned a structural system that defies any difference between joints and members, horizontal and vertical, strands and intersections. It is comprised of structural threads twisted together to form an endless fabric. The members operate both as columns and beams, and each of them is only held in place by its distinct relationship to its neighbors. Conducted at the intersection of precedent work in fiber composite structures and Waxman experimental notion of a twisted knot joint, this research proposes a sequentially emerging type of space frame system from continuous fibers which form both nodes and edges. We believe that applying the logics and rules of space frames to filament materials will enable us to create highly differentiated space frame, uh, space frame structures at different scales. From this point, we introduce the term spatial winding as our main method, in which the continuous filament goes over, under, and around itself, creating nodes in space. So let's understand the geometrical logic behind it. If we start from the simplest configuration, that would be only four anchors forming a square, in order to pull an edge, there always needs to be an opposite anchor. The relation between the anchors and the edge will define the angle of the pulling fiber and the position of the sliding node. 
as well as the resulting angle of the pull fiber. So if you keep doing this motion, you form this type of star structure. And if you want to be, you just need to combine different levels and connect them vertically. During our design process, we started cataloging the different aspects that could have a geometrical influence. For example, how the number of turns could affect the position of the fibers. Because while pulling the fiber uh, with only one turn would enable the nodes to slide, if you apply two turns, it would fix it in position. The same could go for the amount of turns for the vertical connections. Regarding the anchoring routines, we could define if and how the fibers would cross with each other. Then after forming the basic logic, we started developing different spatial synthetic strategies based on our geometrical rules that could bring more complexity and geometrical differentiation. For example, by shifting the anchor heights, you could form a directly a 3D shape. Or you could also play with asymmetric non-parallel connections that can be combined to form a curvature. Or you could offset the lengths generating parallel nodes in space. But one of the most interesting strategies here is the one that uses the fiber as formwork. What this means is that we would wind a segment that would work mainly to uphold an upcoming fiber. Then the segment could be removed or could become part of the final structure. This strategy has a big influence in simplifying the frame and the need for mechanical anchor points. It also allows you to create shapes that are somehow independent from the frame. Here, for example, is a physical prototype that uses the glass fiber for, its, for the same strategy. And after winding many models by hand, we got a better understanding of the material's behavior and the necessary exchange routines. We realized also that precision and control of the angles will be of extreme importance. This information was crucial for our robotic fabrication development at the later stage. In the end, our system presented a high level of versatility. With the same simple generic frame, we were able to generate a catalog of different shapes. So after this bottom-up exploration of the geometric system, we wanted to see how we can build a longer spanning structure with differentiated anchor heights and how structurally performing could we make this object. For this, we decided to build a table as a case study. We set up an initial digital model and connected it to a finite element analysis using Caramba and used an evolutionary solver, in this case Galapagos, to gain a better understanding how different anchor configurations and node positions would influence the structural behavior. We also looked at cross-section optimization of the different members, depending on their function in the winding sequence. The digital model and resulting node positions could then be used to inform the rest length of the individual connection. Uh, the table was fabricated manually in about four hours with a simple frame made of aluminum profiles. Spools with different tone numbers were used, enabling the fabrication with various cross sections. For the material, we used self made carbon fiber prepregs, which presented a good viscosity, enabling the material to slide while keeping the whole setup very clean. And after the structure was wound, it was cured in an industrial oven for four hours at 120 degrees Celsius. The final table structure measured 160 by 80 by 75 centimeters and weighed only 1.8 kilograms. An evenly distributed load test up to 60 kilograms showed less than two centimeters of deformation. However, to make better use of the information from the digital model, the next step was to automate the manufacturing process, which could enable a more precise fabrication of the geometry. Since the process of hand winding in the previous prototypes is analog to a robotic fabrication process, it already revealed certain constraints, such as the limited spool size to pass through the already wound fiber. We categorized the sequences into winding, material exchange, and material transport, and defined three possible material exchange scenarios, a vertical, lateral, and angular exchange. We then looked into many different options for fabrication. However, as a proof of concept, we decided on a six-axis robotic arm as the winding agent and a two-axis CNC gantry to enable the material exchanges. Both were equipped with custom end effectors that increased the dexterity of the system. We'll now walk you through our workflow for the final demonstrator. 
which starts with a design loop where the boundary conditions and syntax logics are defined. These are then building the digital model, which forms the basis of the structural analysis and optimization loop. Once the geometry is defined, the path planning for the robotic fabrication process is then done within Grasshopper, which includes the anchoring routines for the robot, as well as material exchange commands for the gantry and, and the factory. We then uh, had the opportunity to develop and test our fabrication setup at the Autodesk Technology Center in Boston. Here you can see the robot unspooling extra fiber length. The spool rotation is then locked and the fiber anchored, which means that the rest length of the fiber is now defined and the fiber hangs with a certain amount of slack, which defines the position of the later created node. Uh, this also means that we can use the information from the digital model to inform the rest length of the fibers to place the new fiber nodes where they should be. Here you see the CNC gantry moving into position and as the fiber bobbin moves down, it puts tension on the previously laid fiber. The spool inside the robot effector is held by an electro-permanent magnet, which, which can be deactivated to pass the spool to the gantry effector. Now the gantry is moving under the already placed fiber and gives the bobbin back to the robot effector. Then the fiber is anchored again and the process is repeated for the next segment. Here you can see the uh, crossing is now putting tension on, on two segments. And we equipped the CNC gantry with a pan and tilt effector to allow for the angular exchange, which is needed to connect upper and lower layers. For the final demonstrator geometry, we wanted to create a long span structure that's made of unique elements. Uh, for this, we basically had to decide between a component-based or a continuous building system. Given the fabrication setup, we needed to work within the normal robot reach, but still wanted to achieve a long span and make use of continuous fibers, avoiding potentially weak mechanical connections in a component-based approach. So we decided to develop a hybrid system that would take advantage of both approaches. So as you can see here, after the first part of the structure was wound, it was cured in the oven and once fully cured, it was taken out of the frame the frame reconfigured for the next element and the previous element reattached outside of the frame, sharing anchor points with the next element. This allowed us to build a structure much larger than the frame with this multi-stage curing process. And being so light, it was able to just cantilever out of the frame without the need for any supports. Here are some impressions from the final demonstrator. Uh, for this prototype, we opted for industrially made pre -prex which were dry to the touch and could be handled at room temperature without curing. Uh, so much more suitable for the robotic fabrication process. However, the dryness of the fibers actually turned out to be an issue uh, because it prevented them from sliding properly, which meant that we had to manually adjust the node positions and the final structure was therefore also wound by hand. Leading into the discussion, we think that spatial winding showcases the potentials of an integrative design methodology by taking advantage of inherent material properties. And we hope that the developed fiber syntax strategies for a fiber space frame system, where both edges and nodes are of the same continuous material, can not only expand the design space of fiber structures, but also present a novel alternative to conventional space frame structures by providing lightweight structural performance with a high degree of customizability and ultimately the potentials towards the process that allows to fully tailor fibers in space. Finally, we would quickly like to thank our tutors, Maria and Jakob, our supervisors, Professor Menges and Professor Knippers, and everyone who supported the project along the way. We would also like to thank the AAG community for giving us the opportunity to present our work today. Thank you.